All right, let's try take two. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, why don't we just meld the two together with two intros and just show everybody how ridiculously dumb we are? Well, I think they all know how stupid we are. <laughs> it'll, yeah. be, it'll be funny, though. Yeah, Mixler wasn't logging in, and it was unfortunately yours truly at fault. Yeah. We're all talking right. to everybody. He's like, yeah, call in, yep. whatever. Power and Speed Podcast, we're back. Um, everybody's here. Tad actually made it. And, yep. Uh, he was threatening not to. Yeah, threatening not to. Well, you know. I want to be in Manhattan all day. And, I mean, dude, what, you he's a diamond buyer or something, right? Yes. <laughs> you just send <laughs> the, <Boy Bay. laughs> just these random messages from Ted. Some guy just shit Didn't, and pissed himself, he, yeah, and I'm yeah. watching him. Uh, yeah. What is wrong? And, and pictures of random hubcaps. What? Yeah. I thought you were there working. The guy got ran over, right? Yeah, well, no, he, uh, he had a, something, some lady hit him in a car or whatever. Somebody told me, you got to go out there and see this guy's dead. And he wasn't dead, but. Was it an escort? I couldn't tell what it was. Jesus, Mike, Jake. we just went over this. It's a fiesta, <laughs> man. Festivus, uh, whatever. Uh, poor Tad. Festivus. What about you, Crunch? Anything this weekend? Uh, nah, just cooling out, relaxing, checking up, you know, my, my, my shows. And I, uh. I was dri- uh, no, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving around in my uh, my father's old Buick. He sold it to him, my cousin, so I went to my cousin and got the Buick '69 Deuce and a Quarter. Riding around for a few hours, having fun in it with the top down. Well, my cousin keeps it really clean, so I had to keep wiping it down. Before top I, down, huh? Before I bought it back, yeah. There's something about the top down. Thing. He's a drop top guy. <laughs> yeah, it's just something about that. I used to do that shit. Used to hit like Duke Island Park and all kinds of stuff, like just cruise around aimlessly. Mm. When no burnouts. But yeah, and then, like when you had, especially like when you were younger, like no responsibilities, nothing. Yeah, just <laughs> where, where to cruise to next? <laughs> kind of, yeah. kind of like you are now. No, oh. I'm I'm responsible now. I think. Well, yeah, you are responsible, but you don't really have any responsibilities. No, I don't. Other than to yourself, I have this show to produce. It's quite important. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that was going five minutes ago. Yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. Crunch, I heard you have some sad news. and uh, uh, Yeah, we just want to say a, a prayer and, and wishful thinking for uh, Flex, Andy Harris, who's uh, Mike Casamano's right-hand man. His uh, mom had a stroke, so he's been dealing with that. I read a lot of stuff on Facebook. I uh, hit, hit him on the phone and just you know, told him to keep his, keep his head up because he's a positive individual. You know, if you know him or you see him, he's always upbeat. So this is a little, it's a little different scenario for most of us to even fathom unless you go through it. So we just want to say, you know, keep your head up. Yep. Prayers out to him. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. That's a, that's a tough thing. And I have, um, another piece of, of sad news. Um, Anthony DeSoma, his, uh, his family suffered a loss, his wife, and I mean, forgive me if I get this wrong because Brian saw it today. You know, he's the Facebook guy. I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. And I don't know if he saw it on Facebook or he saw it in an obituary or maybe it might even be my mom, but one of Nancy's parents passed. Okay. And I, I, I had even stated in our first attempt at starting the show, but I thinking better of it. I'm not really sure what the cir- circumstance was. Um, but that's, you know, it, it's sad, dude. Whenever, you know, a loss like that, sucks i mean i'm never any good at it never no, never ever either. ever me ever all right and it's uh it's I, I i feel bad for anybody that's in that position because you know I, I did lose my father yep. you know and and that's uh it stays with you i remember when uh my father passed away the guy john mccoy said to me he goes you know you're in a club now and i said oh yeah and he goes yeah and he's like and it never changes so mm-hmm. you know it definitely prayers to everybody that that's already gone through this yeah but you know it just sucks just, hey, re- real quick, sorry, 908-751-0211. Uh, somebody just texted me, yelling me, yelling to give out the number. <laughs> so again, 908, yeah, we suck. <laughs> I got to get texts do from these my buddies. Pe- do these people realize this isn't what we do? You know what yeah, I mean? They, yeah, no, he's, he's We're being idiots. nice. He, he, should, he did it very nicely. He should have right. said, hey, morons, <laughs> you know, give out your phone numbers if you want somebody to call. So again, 908-751-0211, call us and remind us how stupid we actually are, I guess. I <laughs> We're working on it. We're working yeah, on it. Yeah. Someday we'll actually have some kind of structure. Uh, we'll, we'll try anyway. Yeah. We'll be scripted. Uh, we got to so, get we gotta get Alan back to keep us oh, in line. You better watch it. You've been fucking with him a little too much. He's going to get you. I know. I heard. I heard. He's going to get he's, you. He's going to beat me up. We were going we to attempt to get Alan in here to replace Tad. And, uh, but, but Tad. Uh, I pulled it through. Alan cannot replace Tad. He may be able to sit in that chair. The cursed chair. But he does not have the uh, wherewithal to replace Ted. 
<laughs> wait, wait, let me put it. The, the hybrid, the hybridity. <laughs> yeah, I, the, I, can, the, I can tell you that Tad <laughs> tends to talk a little more mm. than, than Alan. And it usually is somewhat coherent. Yeah, it's exactly. more, more on point. <laughs> uh, and, and Alan did note to me today that he would, he would be sending me hate text messages during the show for whatever reason. <laughs> mostly about, me. mostly about me. Probably. About you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about pro stock. Okay. Um, they're, cars no longer two four barrels no, no. jericho trans mm, mm, mm. yeah no, and i, I want to note that during the new opening that we were using tad you were going in a, in a pattern there. well the, yeah, well the uh, first yeah the first opening he I, did yeah, I, I was doing jericho and he was going lenko because he's saying no you're wrong like what's that all about i'm like dude it's been like 15 years they've had jericho's in them you know so then you know the second startup i just tried to jam it reverse <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know? yeah h patterns he was going mm. back to bill jenkins's 68 <laughs> camaro right Hey, I got I got videos of his uh, Vega. So, really, but the big wing. About anyway, I got Bill Jenkins stories that oh god, he was one of the first people I ever went to see when I started my job. At Ma- from Manly, yeah. Oh, that's a little bit of pressure. Huh? Oh my god, the grunt. Yeah. Wow. And in the, I'll just tell you the end of the day. Um, he was done with me. <laughs> I forget what I was trying to sell him, and he was done with me. So he sat back in his chair at his desk pulled out some nail clippers and started <laughs> clipping his nails and didn't look at me again. <laughs> I swear to God, that's a true story. And I, so I, I you know, I, I sat there for like three minutes and then I realized he was done with me. So I was like, all right, Bill, uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And I left. Now, what most people don't know about Tom is he, he was quite the douchebag, <laughs> much better than he, than he is now. I mean, when he worked at Ask Frank first, I mean, I would have put my foot in his ass <laughs> yeah. if, if I had a moment. Wait, wait, wait. I think Alan will agree Yeah, Alan that. is actually upset with you as well when you worked at Ask Frank first. Yeah. And I, that's amazing to me that you could go there and you could handle that. Like, I'm surprised. Like, I'm fucking talking to you. Why don't you put the fucking, I mean, I. Not Bill Jenkins. No? Couldn't do it, huh? No, come on, man. <laughs> was, you know, it was, it was on the same level of like, I could never do that shit to your father. You know, be, be a douchebag. I couldn't. Yeah, but I remember Ralph. He'd be filing rings or something of, like that, and he'd look, look over his glasses at you, and then go right back to it. It's like you know, whatever. You're, it's just <laughs> no, but not I worth mean, it. there's certain pre- people in the industry that you just know you're supposed to respect. Yeah, that was out of pure respect. Yeah, yeah, because you know what they know. I wish I was there. I would have just laughed right. At you. <laughs> and yeah, I deserve, like I, I was probably looking like a big doof, right? Yep. And he's clipping his nails. That is a hundred percent true story. Well, you've met you've met some pretty big dogs, though. Yeah. Bill. Yeah. Ralph Troopy. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people. Gene Fulton. Fulton. Fulton just called me last week. <laughs> He's like, I sent a fax up there for some valves, and I'm not sure they're working on them. Can you make sure they're working on them? I'm like, yeah, Gene, I can do that. I think it'd be more important to see if anybody still used a fax. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, he does. He's got no, no email. So I am looking at the NHRA, at least what I have, unless it was further revised, but I don't believe so. Um, this came right off their website and has a very official NHRA logo on it. So, oh, so it must be right. I would think it should be right. And it was on the internet. So we all know everything yeah. there is right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I was looking through, you know, it, it gives, you know, part numbers, which I couldn't seem to look up. I went to, you know, as soon as this was released, I said, well, you know, I'll look for, I wanted to see what the throttle body was like. And, you know, so I went to go look and I really couldn't come up with anything. Um, but they list, uh, Holly definitely got their hooks in here. You know, yeah. this is, this is it. Yep. And I, I don't think. You think it cost them anything? <laughs> oh yeah. You think? <laughs> you think? And I mean, uh, I, I don't know what to make of this other than, I, I guess Holly isn't going to make a million dollars off this. No. I mean, they're not, they're not going to make dick off this. Like somebody had said to no, me. No, they're going to spend it. Oh yeah. They, they, if, if they're magically tomorrow were 300 pro stock teams, they're still behind. I, I can't imagine that they, they'd come out ahead of this. Yep. I guess the only hope is to push for their, their street systems. Yeah. To, well, it's to, advertising. Yeah. So. yeah. Brand recognition. Yep. No and, doubt. But, uh, I'm looking and they've got, they've got some interesting things. Um, there is a mandatory fuel injector. Yep. Mandatory. Yep. Um, mandatory throttle body. Yep. Which we just talked about back and forth a little bit before we started. Uh, mandatory ECU, um, mandatory rev limiter and. Well, it all makes sense. Yeah. But now you see, now here's, here's what I saw. Now, I don't know if this is in the rules, if this is what this means, or they're just saying this is what it's capable of. Fuel delivery system, 90 PSI max. Can't go over 90. Okay. Um, 
I th- I think what they've done and oh the one of the things that has to be talked about uh, original OEM design hood. Yep. So that yeah, that's well, be that, interesting. well that's why they made that the big butterfly the bug big single butterfly throttle body. Yeah, and I think in here if I look uh, throttle body must be mounted facing forward. Right. And remain in the engine compartment. So I guess you know not. Well, I, I could tell you about that. Yeah. Uh, back in back when Outlaw Ten Five cars started to become popular, uh, this guy Brad Brand um, put his throttle body under the dash because he was the first guy that had fly by wire, and he was using it for traction control. And he finally got popped. Mm, mm. So um, everybody was hiding their shit inside the, you know, somewhere in the car, so nobody could see it. Really? Yeah. So that's probably why they wanted out front because. Well, that- a lot of stuff you can do if you hide a throttle body. Then they have that big open, you got to be able to see everything now rule. Well, oh, that's now. Part. Yeah. Yeah, that's now. Well, I, I think what they did here, a lot of the stuff, like dry brake coupler, I know why that's there, so they can pull fuel samples. Um, hoods, air intake must be located below top of front of, front of grill, which is yep. kind, of, kind of interesting. Um, opening in body must be submitted to by, by the OEM and accepted by NHRA. So I guess they're that I almost wonder if that's a rule to like stop the little Corvette hood scoop, you know, or, or anything of that type. Yeah. Well, they're, I mean, they're going to restrict the size and it's going to be similar on both cars. It's funny. It's only Chrysler and Chevy are in this thing. Yeah. And, you know, looking at this, it it's, it's really a big shopping list more than anything. But yeah. I, I think the, the thing to really take away from this is what they did with some of the rules. Um, like the 90 PSI rule, the very specific injector rule. I think it's said in here, if I remember correctly, and I, I mean, I, I read through this pretty well, so I'm doing a lot of it from memory, that the fuel injectors are serial numbered and assigned to teams. Like when you mm-hmm. get them, they record them. Yep. So you've got your injectors. Because if you got to think, where would you be able to find improvements? And fuel injector could be an expensive and very specific location you could find improvements and you'd buy hundreds of them. hundreds of them just like remember you used to buy um stamped chevy rocker arms and mm-hmm. use the highest ratio ones in mm-hmm. a stocker yep oh, and okay. most people probably don't know what goes on i know in the engine building I side know. i know i mean i remember seeing buckets of, of rocker arms that people would go through and if you can get stuff stuff in the you know one seven two one seven three. Oh, so they wanted the, the all the rockers with the high end tolerance side. Well, the highest ratio, right. so you would actually move the can, right. move the valve more. So they have a plus or minus on the tolerance, and you want all the pluses. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. I'm sure yeah. you've looked at your your share of rockers. Oh yeah, rockers. Um, I mean, there's a million things like that. Yep. we used to do, and and people would never never think that that happened. Yep. But yeah, there's well, because you got manufacturing tolerance on either side. But right. that's see, that's a difference between a guy that's putting a motor together for himself. And I, I, I do, I gotta be careful about what I say here. Cause I don't want to offend a lot of people, but if, if you're putting a motor together for a class with no rules, I'm not saying you're a dummy. I'm not, but when you have to work in a very tight set of rules, you tend to get really creative to find every last little ounce you have of to. what you can find. Yeah, you have to. And I guarantee you that every pro stock guy that sat down and looked at this roll package was like, huh? Okay. Injectors. Well, we're going to have to come up with an injector, you know, spray pattern analyzer. We're going to have to buy, you know, one of the testers that are out there. We're probably going to have to, they automatically saw, okay, the injectors are registered. Fuck, we're going to have to buy like, you know, 30 sets to see how they work and see what the variance is. There's, there's going to be a lot here. I automatically thought to myself, I would start drilling holes. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that came to my mind. Like, yeah, knocking, I knocking the caps holes. off or whatever. I'd be doing all kinds of shit trying to get more out of it. Well, this injector is manufactured by Bosch. That I did see. Of course. Um, so uh, I would imagine it's probably, well, I, I mean, I guess I was going to say it's probably something pretty basic, but it probably could be just about anything. I mean, this could be specially made just for this project. It I could guess. be. I mean, Bosch makes all the good injectors. Like Injector Dynamics is the big Bosch dealer, and they have stuff. Um, Let's consult our Formula One expert, that is. Yes. Do F1 cars, did you ever hear anything about in, in these days of past that they would talk about whose injectors they are? Did they ever see anything of that detail? The the only detail I remember talking to you a long time ago about, I showed you an engine, the fuel injectors were above the intake manifold. They they weren't even, it's like they were hovering above the intake oh, and that they was shot in, down. Yeah, that was in that Renault video. Yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And I was like, what is the advantage to that? And, you know, 
my, my sport spurted out a few different things and but of I, course that month it could be that and next month it could be something completely different yeah i would think it would be atomization properties that's what they found they needed probably the rpm range they were working on yep. i mean you know yeah. got to think if the air is moving that fast and things that are turning twenty thousand, maybe they found that they actually get better atomization i think right. the injectors were aimed up weren't they no, I, no, I, I remember no, one. It was like no, they, they were, were they were like down. six inches over the manifold, shooting down at it, and you got to wonder: is there heat evaporation tendencies that they're getting better at? You know, before it goes into the manifold. Or- Listen, the the reason that you have one carburetor be better than another, everybody looks at this and says, "Well, it's flow number." It's not flow number. We could have, and I mean, this goes back to the rocker conversation when we ordered two barrel carburetors for the two barrel class, and you know, we took the two barrel class for circle track just as seriously as we did any other drag mm-hmm. class. I mean, yep. we were looking for twos and threes, even though it was stupid because your retards driving around in the dirt in circles. It, it didn't matter. But we'd always look for it. And we'd have to order 10 carburetors. We'd end up keeping three of them. And I mean, you take these things apart and they're identical. <laughs> I mean, they're uh, everything is made exactly the same, but You've got a few that are five or six better than others. And you take the metering block out of one, put it in another, oh, okay. and it didn't get any better. You'd take the center from one to another. You know, you, you'd find these things. And what it all really came down to was how well fuel atomized. Right. That's why I was kind of surprised to see the fuel pressure limit because I am a high fuel pressure guy. I think that, you know, it's nice to have the fuel to help your atomization process if the injector is designed to do that. So I think that might be why they did the fuel pressure side for two reasons. Number one, I I think more than anything, if there was injector shenanigans going on, these guys might try to run these things at like maybe, you know, 250 pounds, something to get super atomization. Yep. Wow. You're right. So that becomes fuel pumps and regulation stuff and perhaps even safety issues. You know, lines coming off me, who knows? Who knows? Um, Well, when you have a, 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 when you have a throttle body, um, rule and a, um, an injector rule, the pressure really, I don't know that the pressure is going to help you too much. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you can for, for, from again, without knowing, and I'm sure it says it in this, in this rule package, but I got to tell you, most of it is diagrams. Um, I'm scrolling to the bottom here to see where we're at 88 pages Mm. of diagrams and part numbers and directions and flow charts. Yeah. Pinouts of the ECUs. There's a lot here. I'm going to read it later. I want to see what about the transmission and stuff like that. doesn't say anything about it. <clears throat> I mean, no, the trans stuff, I guess, stayed exactly the same. This is just purely engine management and engine management. Mm. That's all it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of diagrams. It's going to be interesting to see if it's uh, exciting to watch. No, um, I, I don't think. Flat hood. Uh. I think the cars, my prediction, cars are going to go faster because they took the hood scoop out of Airstream. That's what I think. Okay. The, the hood scoop, the hood scoop being out of the airstream is going to make. I don't care how aerodynamic aerodynamics, the scoops okay. are. It's still. I think it's going to be beneficial. How about the potential pitfalls though? Like, what about the guy who complains that his rev limit, his rev limiter is coming on at uh, ten four? Well, uh, that's where. I you, mean, there's some percentages there that that are really going to screw people up. And in a in a class that competitive, if you bump the rev limiter, I would say you're going out. Yeah, and if you had a guy, that, I mean, and realize what we're talking about here with NHRA Pro Stock. If one guy's rev limiter hits 30 RPM sooner than he expected or is inconsistent compared to other boxes he has, right. has a failed ECU, swaps another one in, they're going to do exactly with ECUs and everything else what we did with rocker arms or what have you. Yep. They're going to they're gonna check shit that way. Yep, and, and they're going to have to. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. So, I mean, this is... Now, Holly did say in here that they were going to make sure that no teams bought multiple stuff until all the teams had everything they needed to be able to compete. But there's, I'm, let me give you an example, MSD boxes. Yeah, I'm, I'm lost. I'm lost. Okay. Since, since you have a single supplier of items, um, oh, okay. Holly, okay. Okay. you have to be, and, and since they are now dictating, you need to buy the stuff. Imagine you're crunch and you decided, okay, I got hit on the head by a brick and I decided I wanted to dump every ounce of money I could get and build a pro stock car and you needed a box. And Holly says, sorry, we're out. Well, since the organization is dictating that you have to use that stuff, you got to be able to get it. Right. You have right, to. Right. So they have to have it available for can't me. Can't be out. And another guy can't have 10 of them. Can't, right. Can't be out. Right. I got you. And I mean, look, if, if you were at the racetrack and you had a failure and you didn't have spare parts, hey, look, somebody could argue that if you were there and you had a failed motor and you didn't have a spare, your own fault. But 
if it's coming up to the race and you need to get one of those things and this is the only brand you can use you know they better have a lot they of shit right there them. and yeah. i would imagine they will i'm sure they will but they did say that while things are moving in this direction and i, I guess primarily for testing purposes they're going to make sure that you know no teams stack up on stuff and stop other people from being able to buy it, yeah which is good but once they can check this stuff, that's when they're going to start looking at ECUs. I mean, who knows if they're going to start looking at Hall Effect stuff to make sure one's more stable or right. not as stable. I mean, yep. you don't know. They might even just make a certain amount uh, separate from regular production. Well, these are not production stuff. This is, oh, okay. this is from what I can see here, they did keep the Dominator brand name um, for, I guess, for branding purposes because right. their fuel injection stuff is called Dominator. Right. Okay. Um, and look, Holly Dominator, that's been around as long as they've been making big carbs. Yep. Um, but, but I think the, the main thing with these is they, they developed kind of like NASCAR did with McLaren. I, and I believe it is McLaren. I'm sure I'm right about that. Cause I remember reading it, the NASCAR box of McLaren. McLaren right? yep. Okay. McLaren did a box just specifically for NASCAR. Now, and I wonder how the good old boys like that. You got a UK computer in your in your hillbilly <laughs> circle track car. Yeah, right. You know, but they are they are very high up in the ECU area. I mean, they did F1 stuff as Thaddeus is bobbing his head. Oh, yes. Yep. I mean, right. they're, but Holly, because this is less sophisticated, you don't have car management, you know, you don't have some of the, the things that probably you'd have to do in a circle track car. These things just got to go this RPM to this RPM straight line, do a burnout, everything else. So I'm, and I'm not knocking Holly stuff. I would have a hard time believing it's sophisticated as McLaren. All right. Well, if they did um, stuff for 20,000 RPM, you know, optimizing horsepower at that level, then cutting it down to 10, five, it should be easy to do. Well, I don't, I don't know what Holly stuff is capable of. And I know that I've been told the new systems are getting better and better. Pretty and better. good. Yeah. It's pretty good. So, well, but I think the point you're trying to make is they're going to be tuning the bottom row pretty much yeah. wide open throttle stuff is all like really got to care about yeah think about it nascar guys need drivability they need a big fuel map you know there, there could be a lot of a lot of instances of manifold vacuum throttle position vehicle speed there's a lot of things that you know a, a road race computer or circle track computer would have to do you know yes, i was Pat. thinking what because formula one is the ultimate blah 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 they're given one tank of gas to make the entire race with so you have to do fuel management blah blah, blah. what if Formula, I mean, not Formula One, Pro Stock at one point says, listen, you have this many gallons of gas to make your burnout and your run. Deal with it. Wait, you mean like put a, a fuel restriction on it? I don't well, know do if you could ever do that. Well, if they do with Formula One, though, and you're doing how many laps, you pit stop just for yeah, tires. Yeah, we're and talking that's about yeah. a, you know, a six second race here. I don't, I don't think, I yeah. mean, we're yeah. going to be yeah, measuring that, ounces. Yeah, they, yeah, they give them four uh, ounces of fuel. <laughs> you know, you never know. It's like. Here's your baby you bottle. Them, yeah, hand them a pole and spring bottle. Yeah, you look at the Formula One, though, you go, oh, you put this gas in, all right, how. You, you have to control that they'll fuel. Be taking the fun out of the thing. Going around a turn, the G forces. You have to make sure the fuel is always at the pickup. But you see, this you is know? what happens with all this shit. What people don't understand is that the, some of these rules. What is it? The road, the paved with good intentions, or some yeah. shit. I don't care. Yeah. Remember some some adage yep. that probably I, I should know. Um, those particular ideas, like something like this, is fuel injection side for everything that they plug the hole over. You know, or, or they thought they'd plug like the fuel pressure rule. There's probably five more things that, that maybe up, we yeah. haven't even thought about yet. Yep. <laughs> and the, well, that's what happens. Rules tend to make things more expensive. Um, it and it happens in everything. It it always happens. The tighter you and like Tad said, you've got fuel restrictions in F1. You can carry X amount of fuel. Well, now we have to work that much harder and spend that much more money in fuel research only to figure out how we use less fuel and still make more power. Wow. So the, I'm circling all the way back, these are all pieces of equipment just for NHRA Pro Stock. That's yep. all it is. Yep. So it, it doesn't, I, from what I understand, it doesn't really share anything. Now, not, but I, I think they're, I think they're going to pick up in performance. But there was some discrepancy over throttle body displacement. Yeah, I think, I think that was just a uh, an incorrect um, mathematical equation in one of the magazines that I read. Because they were talking about the throttle openings being, and the carburetor stuff today, being between 2.3 two, and 2.5 uh, diameter per blade. Right. Which would put the the opening total at like almost 40 square inches, 39.89 or something like that. And the new throttle body is like 25 square inches. So, I mean, there's just no way to make the power. But then we looked at it, and mm -hmm. you had found that the, uh, the Venturi size 
is one nine fifty to two inch. Yeah, one nine fifty to two inch. So if you're saying, you know, uh, going back to rocker arms, uh, you would imagine that every pro stock guy buys, uh, you know, center sections and looks at all of them, so they're all two inches or or plus the, you know. Well, they can do anything they want to them, so they probably make them two inches. Make them what they want, yeah. So that's twenty five point one two inches. Okay, so that's, that's exactly why they made that throttle body twenty five inches. All right, so they didn't lose anything in air inlet. No. Um, manifold design. If it's all going to go under the hood, forward facing or not, it can't be as good. Well, I mean, can it? Well, look, everybody always talks about this. Is that oh, you know, we probably should have the phone number in case anybody wants to talk about this. I I don't know. I mean, I find it interesting, but I might be a retard. Nine zero eight seven five one zero two one one, and uh, call us up if you. Is anybody listening? Uh yeah, there's people. I'm actually baffled by a lot of it. I well, want to see what, what, where this excitement is going to go. Look, well, here, let, let's do this. You do know that if you had a fuel-injected car and you put nitrous and fuel nozzles in the front, like, you know, you've got, like, any kind of front, front-mounted front throttle body. Right. Didn't matter if it was a Ford or whatever it was. Remember the Ford 5.0 manifold? They had a spray bar that would go down the whole length of the manifold in the freeze plugs. Right. That's because when you put fuel in air, it gets more direction sensitive and more velocity sensitive. Like the fuel and, and NHRA talks about or the, the site we're looking at just talked about it. What happens with air bleeds and stuff going down the racetrack that, you know, there are the back cylinders tend to get richer because fuel has more mass than air. So it's more affected by vehicle motion mm-hmm. and just like air moving through the manifold would tend to throw fuel to the back of the manifold. Right. So you tend to tune your carburetor knowing the car is going to accelerate at this rate and you get progressively leaner as you get towards the back it's th- there's a lot to it well when you get into this stuff air on its own without fuel you don't have to worry about fuel coming out of the air there's a lot of things to get better right so we're going to have fuel injector placement where it actually is and i i don't know i believe in there somewhere it said it had to be in the manifold it couldn't be in the head yep so they, they did say that it did um but i mean why if you knew you needed x amount of runner length then will that still be the same because now you just have air you don't have air and fuel i wonder what that's going to do to runner length and volume well they're gonna have to shorten it just to clear the hood yeah no no we'll look at an ls1 they have a lot of runner in them think about how they're made yeah but think about the pro stock (laughs) tunnel ram how tall they are yeah but you do realize why some of that is that way right no apparently not um because you couldn't ever shorten up a manifold or make it crossed over or anything goofy because you're trying to get straight shot into the cylinder to carry the air the, to get the signal right through the carburetor nice right that's that's why the runners are where they are now that you're carrying an air system you might be able to just have these runners laid over amongst themselves or who and, knows and it won't really matter i would say no yeah but what about plenum effect and what about you know charging opposite cylinders and all that stuff uh, I mean, down well, track with pl- some force, it, it would pro- it'd probably make less. Does less. plenum make that much of a difference with fuel injection as compared to carbureted, though, now? Well, the, the plenum, as far as, like, plenum volume should. That's what I mean. Yeah, plenum volume should. but Okay, but shortening it up. But, uh, you know, then again, I wonder how much plenum volume really comes into play when you it don't have fuel. Like, it sounds like a lot of research don't. and development will cure all of this. Well, Wait. yeah. Yeah. It's about to get interesting. Well, yeah, there's there's a <laughs> lot here. And, I, you know, go ahead, woo, I'm thinking we should have Alan back for fluid dynamics or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we? Well, <laughs> you, when you take the fuel out of the air, fluid dynamics goes away other than the- um, Was, was you know, air dynamics? What? No, it, no, it's still fluid dynamics because there's still um, uh, some water in air. So Yeah, and as, as it gets, you know, Tom and I touched on that the other day, the more humid it gets, the yeah. more the air has mass and the more the air reacts. Right. So th- there is a lot to this, and there's a lot that they're going to have to figure out. I think in the end, uh, I know the one thing, the one overall thing, that I don't know if it'll turn out to be the case or not. It was in an article on BankShift, and they do have a lot of information, they bankshift.com. Yep. I, I clipped that, and I sent it to everybody on the group. They had, What did they have? A set of pro-stock carburetors, or, or they, their pro-stock team had 30,000 in carburetors, 30, or was 000. that for a set of carburetors? No, budget. A budget. A budget for the year was thirty grand. Okay. And I think they could get three but, motors worth of fuel injection for what? Ten? Ten grand. Yep. So I mean if you knock not the twenty thousand dollars should make or break a pro stock team. If you, But it's still twenty grand. 
it is still twenty grand, but if you're worried about twenty grand, you shouldn't be racing pro. No, stock. no, they're, yeah, they're, that's I'm. I don't they're going to take that point. twenty grand and put it in another aspect of the racing team. Yeah, exactly. Like, it'll it'll just it'll research just research and development and the manifolds, but yeah, yeah nobody's going to step up their cookout budget at the at the pro stock pits because <laughs> no. they got to save on fuel injection. It's <laughs> no. not not what it's unless about. I was on the team. Yeah, have to get some yeah. food. Definitely have to get some food. You know what's going to be better? Uh, I'm sure they're going to have wide bands in every cylinder. Yeah, but they're going to tune every cylinder. Uh, well, they, see, they they will make power that way. These are the places that they can probably do some improvement. Now, I know this from the NASCAR guys that we were because a lot of uh, this is going to sound bad too, but a lot of the the better guys now in NASCAR came from up here, yep. and and they migrated down there. And I'm not saying the Southern people are stupid, so don't don't because I'd much rather be down there with you guys than up here. Um, but but that's oh, another show. It's another show <laughs> with banjos. Yeah. So we, we, um, when you, when you know some of these people that go down that direction, you start to hear the information and everything that, that, that filters back. And, you know, you get some things like, look, I'm not really supposed to tell you this, but here's what happens. And, you know, then little things filter out like MSD had a little tool to actually bend your reluctors on an MSD distributor. So you could do cylinder to cylinder timing. (laughs) I mean, and you didn't really pick up on it until you started thinking about it. So the cup guys probably had things like cylinder to cylinder, you know, break mean effective pressure measurement to measure what was really going on in the cylinder, when the event occurred, when detonation occurred, you know, is there, is there a, a bad pressure wave? And they found stuff with doing cylinder to cylinder timing. Yep. Now, one thing you can do with a system like this is there's no more screwing around with getting your cylinder to say, all right, let's take a half a degree out here, whatever we want to do. Right. Same so, with, same with fuel injector, you know, uh, the timing of the fuel injector pulse, the pulse width. Mm-hmm. There, there's, there's a lot of, lot there's of, a lot of variables here to make this, this work. There for, sure are. Per and, team. and there's going to be, there's going to be teams that unfortunately, because this is so involved um, with the, with the things they can now measure more than anything, because of the things they can adjust, I think it's going to change their data collection methods. And it's probably going to drive up the equipment they have to have to do data collection. And I know that on the bang shift thing, it already said that like some of the fuel injected guys or the pro stock guys already grabbed their fuel injected guy. Like yeah. the guy that they knew, knew something. They're like, you, you're with us. Cause we know this is happening. Yep. So it, it's neat. It's mm. a neat thing. Wow. I'm not going to say I don't like it, but you know, boy, it probably, I think it's going to be cool. Learning curve wise, it I think it might keep some people out. Used to be able to buy a carburetor or buy a pair of carburetors and not a tone them. Well, you got to believe that next year, the first few races at least are going to be exciting. Oh yeah. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see a big gap. Like I don't want to see a uh, you know four or five hundreds pro stock field. No, I might see be a, a two tens. Yeah, or two something tens like that. field. would be like, oh, he's fucked. That would be cool. <laughs> you know, he, 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 whoever he hired is a goofball. Yep. You, know, you know what I mean? That'd be fun. Wow, that so would, the guy that's two tens behind is automatically. He wants to just go home. Yeah, he Finish. doesn't. He he's got to go home and look at his computer guy and punch him in the mouth. Yeah, you know because that. <laughs> but it yeah, that's, that's I that's I think it's exciting. Cutthroat. Yep. So they'll be calling Anthony maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and guys like that, and like there was a guy that used to work with Anthony that just did tuning of this stuff. Cole and Junior. Oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> that's another story that I'd love to get into Stalker. one day or another. Um, there's another. Another interesting aspect to this, to what I have found with a lot of fuel injection guys that do programming, a lot of them came into this and they don't really know a lot about motors. They don't. That's true. And I mean, I remember having to explain to somebody, God, I can't remember who it was, somebody that should have known. And I said, dude, that simulates a power valve. What do you mean? I said, well, think about how a power valve works. And that's how you'd adjust this portion of the, I said, this is accelerator pump. This is power valve. And he's like, I don't understand. I said, yeah, he didn't know what a power valve was. Because that guy could have uh, never tuned a, a carburetor car to be as good as it needed to be. Right. But since it was just a number, he could kind of figure his way through it. So yeah. he, he wasn't into vacuum and all that? Hell no. Oh, okay. No, they, they, didn't, they didn't understand the function of a power valve. They didn't. I mean, most people know that if you took a power valve out, you go up approximately 10 numbers in jet. If you weren't going to use a power valve in a circle track stuff, we'd use the power valve and the two barrel motors to actually lean the motor back down as you go for peak because you can generate manifold vacuum with a two barrel. There's... There's all kinds of stuff, but these guys, they don't, they, they don't nope. know. Nope. Wow. So, I mean, there is the, depending on the guys they got, I would think that the pro stock teams got the right guys. Oh, I'm sure they got good guys. Oh, there's re- plenty of guys out there. Remember, I- well, remember we had the guys that did the uh, mechanical <laughs> fuel pump 
You don't need an electric. My mechanical fuel pump, I got one of the big poly pumps. My car goes low, and it's like, yeah, okay. Okay. We almost went to crickets there for a minute. <laughs> Retard highway. <laughs> um, but like, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go on. I'm going to say something here and I hope, and if, if this ever happens to, to pass his ears. Don't offend anyone. I'm not going to offend anyone. I'm going to give mad props. Okay. Um, I would like to think that one of the sharpest guys at this game, even though he hasn't done well lately is Warren Johnson. So he, he is my hero. Yeah. I am going to tell you that. I think if, if Warren is going to make an honest effort at this, I think Warren will be back in a big way. That's, yeah. that's my prediction. Because? I think that he's a guy that has the most, I'll say basic raw engine knowledge. Oh, okay. That, that's going to be my thought. And I don't mean to offend anybody else, but I think he's a very, very smart guy. He is a real smart guy, but I'm going to, I'm going to completely disagree with Who him. do you think? We get a poll going here. Yeah, we'll uh, put a cool 20 on it. Okay. Um, I think it's pretty much going to stay the way it is. Really? Yeah. Uh, you know, the Greg Anderson team, uh, they have really good people. They're tight with NASCAR. Uh, Nick Ferry, you yeah. know, he, he, he won it last year with uh, Eric Anders, really smart cat. Uh, Roy Johnson. They have people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there is no shortage of, of right. tuners out there. I would there. think that they didn't go all the way to the top all these years to, yeah. to, to let these rules change them. Hey, and nobody you can't, <laughs> meet, you can't let me root for the old guy, really? Well, hey, listen, so he, he has a chance because he's the name. I'm as but big a Warren guys, fan as you are. Right. These guys, I love the guy. These guys got to the top for a reason, so this is not going to stop him. Warren, Warren for stop me, any of us. borders on Alan Carole, um, Adam Carolla status. Wow, Warren, Warren is he's your idol. No, I know he's he, my idol. I'm just not stalking him. I'm not stalking him. No, I I, I well, agree. He has, with you. he has the history and the name. So yep, and and uh, the and push and the credentials. Push. Yeah, he's won right. a couple of races. And I mean, I don't mean any disrespect to any of the pro stock guys. No, not, not by any means. No, um, we probably should give a number out again in case anybody wants to call. There's actually a, a fair amount of people listening. Nine zero eight seven five one zero two one one. Um, you know, I dare somebody to call. I and like us I on should, Facebook. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh what motherfucker! Oh, it's the, down. The phone is down. I think it might be down. Hang on, Mister uh, Technical. Nope, it's, it's on. It ain't me. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm safe. Well, well <laughs> Tom, I was just gonna say, Mister Technical Difficulty. Tom, yes, sir. You did mention a car that sold for seventeen point <laughs> yeah. something million dollars. Yeah, I did. I was watching uh, TV the other day, and it's, it was news. You know, during dinner or whatever, and this guy's at a some kind of car show in California. Talking about an auction, I'm like, oh, what the hell could that possibly happen here? You know, because we've talked about cars. You know, your dad's old car at a million to whatever, and I've seen million dollar cars. Mm -hmm. This Ferrari rolls up, and the guy's talking about it. And what was it? Se I just played it. Seventeen point something. Point something million bucks. I mean, who who does that? And then there was another Ferrari that didn't sell because it only went to like thirteen six or something million. <laughs> We got to be doing something wrong. I mean, I bet, well, I know we're doing something I'm, wrong. I'm sure the Porsche guys are feeling pretty good about themselves. Oh, yes. You know, yeah, yeah. We got 1.9, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. And the Ferrari guys are like, fuck are you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, you're talking about the oh, yeah, Steve the, McQueen Porsche? Yeah. That that's, sold for what? 1.95 1, 1. million? $1.95 million. Dollars. Yeah. And but, that was like a Porsche Speedster, right? It's only a couple hundred thousand dollar car. Yeah. It's only a couple hundred thousand. If like you owned it or I owned it. Well, if yeah. I owned it. Regular guy owned it. That's what we get. Tad owned it. It'd be worth like eighty-seven bucks. We actually have a caller, but I didn't have my my phone system actually. <laughs> wow. Here. Tad just made some kind of Satan noise to me. <laughs> I hope I live through yeah, the night. Go go shift your jerk. On the way. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I did. Um, I did go by the dealership and uh, I didn't test ride it. I sat in it. Four door Porsche, the Panamera. Yeah, I know you like them. Yeah. So somebody's got money. Never been a Porsche guy. Just never Me either. Been. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I've never, I never even looked at Porsches. I mean, I like, I hear 911 Turbo, I hear that all the time, but this four door, the one I sat in was only a 2011. We had a guy from I Michigan. I hope it ain't a pro right. stock guy is gonna hate on me. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, hang on. Let's grab this guy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy, you're on the air. Are you mad at me? No, I'm mad at you. You're good. All right, good. Uh, you know, Tom uh, scared me to call in, so I figured. <laughs> all right, I like that. <laughs> What's I did like you on Facebook, so I'm safe. All right. <laughs> What's up? These guys kissing <laughs> your ass. How you guys doing? We're doing good. We got a caller. So what do you got for us? One thing that I wanted to talk to you, or talk to you guys about is what's going 
production wise. I heard a rumor that they were going to uh, coil on plug setup, but I don't know if there's any truth to that or not. Um, yeah, I actually, think I saw that. Yeah, there is. Um, and let me open it back up because I closed it cause I didn't have the phone system one to open. Um, cause see there's buttons on the phone. I can answer the phone with the buttons, but I can't ever figure it out. I pushed the wrong ones again, yeah. but hang on. There is, um, there I, is an instance here of coil on plug mentions. Yeah, I saw that. And there was a distance, uh, they called out how far away it could be or something like that or something about distance. Uh, let's see. Fuel injector, straddle body. Uh, for additional information. Well, caller, are you are you excited about the new the changes? I'm sorry, say that again. Are you excited about the changes? Do you think it's gonna make it more? I am. Interesting? You know, it, I uh, I think honestly, the thing that kind of gets me excited a little bit is uh, the fact that they're going to a, like a flat hood because I think what it's going to do is make the cars look, you know, more like a production car. And and I love pro stock and I love the big scoops, um, but. I just, I'd like to see the cars be more representative of what, what you get off the, the showroom floor. So I, I think it's kind of exciting. I agree with that too. Yeah. Amen. Because I, if, if you look at like half the time you look at a pro stock car and you're like, what, what the is hell it? is yeah. it? You For know? years you didn't yeah. know. And it's like, you look at the cup cars now that are car of tomorrow's, you know, by their headlight decals and, and what the badges are. I mean, it's stupid. Well, the cup guys are better now. The car tomorrow thing's been dead for a while. No, I, I, cause, cause I know you don't watch it. I don't watch watching Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy rocks. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> don't pick on Lexi. All right. Hang on a minute. I'm a dreamy. Uh, yes. Main harness. Uh, here we go. Uh, main ECU required tools. Loose wires. Coil wiring. Coil wiring. Yep. Uh, cylinder head grounds, uh, use no small, you talk about wire sizes, power E and yeah, uh, five, five, six dash one, one, two coils. That's what you have to use. Now, why would you give me crickets for coils when it's what the guy was asking about? You dick? <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like doing it. Douchebag. So yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It is coil on plug. And, uh, I, I don't, I mean, it's kind of funny that they really, I mean, this is, they really did think some stuff out here unless they're doing this to make sure that. You know, people just aren't stupid because yeah. they, they say here uses no smaller than 18 gauge wire, um, should be connected. So I wonder if they're doing this to educate you so that, do they think these guys are that dumb? Uh, do not tie. They're just going to try to write every rule they can, you know, to try to cover their ass for the first season. Cause you know, people are going to try to work around everything they can. So exactly. I, it was just, somebody sat down and said, Hey, we need to write as many stipulations as we physically can think of right now to try to keep a even playing field, try to plug all the holes. Well, this is a little nugget that, uh, that I just picked up on, which must tell you how serious these coils are. See what it says there for a fuse. No, a single 70 amp or dual 40 amp relays. Wow. Ready for this, um, to feed ignition coils. So that's a, that's a hell of a fucking yeah, number of current. A, yeah, that is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Does it specify who the like what what brand the coils are? Yeah, it's Holly. Yeah, it's all Holly. Is it Holly? Okay. Yep. Yeah, the whole deal is maybe uh, if you didn't hear that, the whole deal is Holly. I'm sure they paid a pretty okay. penny to get get their deal in there, but it's a good system. We've been talking about it for yeah. a little while. I'm looking here at all the other all the other parts and stuff. Oh, are you really the do's and don'ts? <laughs> he's he's looking for another nugget. <laughs> They've got do's and don'ts on wiring, but I mean the the details at least what they released to the teams uh, and you know i mean what we can see here is actually pretty good it has everything i mean that you could ever ask for as far as pinouts and you know places to monitor data i mean it's 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 a pretty good spec i mean i'm sure what they did is exactly what you said they're trying to plug as many holes as they can to stop people from getting out of control yep right yeah. caller caller where are you from what's your name um i'm from uh michigan actually i talked to you guys uh probably about two months ago um, I'm from, uh, Casco, Michigan, the east side of Michigan. Oh, okay. I remember that. Um, yeah. My name's, uh, Scott. Yep. Okay. So how's the show been? I wasn't here last week, so I know that one sucked, but how about the rest <laughs> of them? <laughs> They've been good. I like them. Honestly, uh, I usually listen to you guys. I'm out working on my car right now, actually. And usually when I'm out doing that, I got you guys, you know, if I don't miss, uh, or if I miss the live show, I, uh, got all the recordings. So I usually listen to you guys out in the, out in the pole barn. Well, we appreciate that. Yeah, they, we do. They all can't be winners, but we're trying. We're, we're trying to get better and better. Like, know, so far. We got to get a logo and some stickers and some shirts. We do have a guy that's talented enough to draw, and he has just completely failed. No, you, Tad, you no, retard, I, pointing, I, at, pointing I, at Crunch. I, Tad, I, Tad I, actually I, is a, a very, very <laughs> yeah. good artist, and uh, he, well, we, we do need something. 
You know, yeah, I'm just, say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep muting your microphone every time I see you pick up your phone. <laughs> And what the hell are you laughing that at? Was, I've, been on you, I've been on you for two months with these. I, I want to walk around with my power and speed well, you uniform. Can, well, I've been trying to figure out something out for it, you know, but I'm like, you know, just. That we, face. We, gave him, we gave him the idea last week. We gave him some stuff. Okay. Well, well, you got the microphone with the tires, Bob. Am know, I muted? No, you're not muted. You should no, I can be. hear you. All right, man. Well, look, thanks for calling in, and uh, we're going to talk about it further. You got anything else? You got any events or anything out there you want to plug or things happening or anything? No, but I do want to say one thing. You sure. are talking to an engineer mm -hmm. does not cook fucking dinner at 7 o'clock. <laughs> no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, I, love no. I love this guy. How far is Michigan from New Jersey? I don't know. Uh, we, we should go do a show it, at his it, house. It's got to be about what? Like 900 miles maybe? Yeah. Day trip, you know. All right, Alan, you just got 900 mile an hour or 900 mile away <laughs> hatred. Yes, he did. That's awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> All right, dude. I'll see you. Thanks for calling. Thanks, man. Yep, see ya. Take care, guys. So you got any, oh. hate, <laughs> any hate text yet? Could that have been any better? Oh, no, it could. And you know, he's going to think we planned that. He's really going to think we, we planned did not. That. No, we legit did not. Oh, he didn't say anything about the swing set, though. He could have really <laughs> not. No, he was saving that, maybe. Mm. I thought he was your friend. Now you're tolling on him a little oh. bit. Oh, that's my boy. That's my man. So that's uh, that's what we know about NHRA Pro Stock ooh, at I, this point. I, uh, I can't say on. one thing. Whoa, I got to add. Did you just say, ooh? I got to see, the, I got to see the actual L cam. It was a nice car. Oh, right. the L cam that, that FUD talked about. Yeah, it was, it was pretty nice. Air, air conditioning and everything. It was a pretty nice car. Now, where, where the fuck are you at with the crickets now, dickhead? Yeah, I know. And it, well, you just threatened to mute me. I can't even touch my <laughs> phone now. <laughs> <laughs> what what, uh, what L cam? The one that that motor's going in? No, no, no. The L cam. His L cam. He bought one? No, he wants to buy one. He showed me the car that he wants to buy. It's sitting next to a 60, 64 uh, Nova. That was real nice. And then next to a Mustang, blah, blah, blah. Whatever blah. happened to that motor he was building? It's it's in the car. It's actually in the car. I don't know if where's the car. The kid put it in. It, it's as far as it got with that. I just so. texted Alan that he got hatred from Michigan. <laughs> I don't know if he's done with this quiche yet. He might not be able to. <laughs> <laughs> I I do want to be there for it's the car's initial beef. fire up though. You know, yeah, and every yeah with with many GoPros. Oh yeah, I'd put one under the car, over the car. But well, to get. Well, <laughs> I'm not even saying because that's uh -oh. it's bad karma. I'm not no, even saying right. it. Can't answer it. Um, all right, let's let's go back to the car auction stuff. So, one point nine five for a Porsche that was worth two hundred. Yep. But the Ferraris, dude, they're so. I mean, they're just off the chart. Yeah. I mean, when people talk about exotic cars, the first thing that comes to the mind is two names: Lamborghini and Ferrari. Right. I mean, they're but seventeen million dollars, bro. Here's what you got. It. Here's what always that is amazes amazing. me. That you just got to realize that if a guy's got $17 million to buy a car that he's not driving, how much money this cat really has? He's got rooms. He's printing it. Think, yeah, oh, think yeah. about that, dude. That's Man, that's amazing. Well, the, the real car, the Ferrari, bah, Bugattis, that's where the money is. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Todd, only, when was the last time a Veyron sold for $17 million? But they're only two oh, they or three will. million, right? Never. Yeah. Yeah, that's, million. that's a brand new car, not a car of some stature you know actually there was a, a same auction uh there was a uh, mclaren v1 p1 what's the f1 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 yeah sold for 13 675 and that's right? more than uh million than mr bean's car because it sold for 12.5 or 12 12 two <laughs> didn't he wreck that car and it was wrecked oh, twice million this is so that's, that's we're definitely in the wrong business no we gotta you know we need way more callers so we could make money enough to hey, buy one it. of those so I, don't I, don't I, don't. If, I don't think if we had the money like that we would spend it he, cars and we're car oh, guys. Would. If we're we car, if we if had, had that kind of money, million, you wouldn't spend seventeen on the car. Yeah, but he he bought the car for a three quarters through you know seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I would, I would too. I would. Now you wouldn't because you've, 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 you've got you've got kids. Crunch has some responsibility. Yeah, but if you got a hundred million, Tad would be oh, the go go yeah. bar. It's, I mean, I I no no I would, I'd would, own one. Get it get it right. Yeah, Jesus, Tad. You're right. I might not. Actually, I would. I would be bad. I would, it would be like if I, if I got a hundred, I'd probably spend 99 of it on a car on, on, not on the car, but eight cars on cars. Yeah. Between the garage to put the cars in and then the cars, and then maybe, uh, oh. maybe a mill on somebody to clean the car. You when, know, you when, could, yeah, you'd have to have that. Then a girlfriend comes oh, yeah. in and says, you need to sell all this stuff. <laughs> you can go. You're dismissed. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. I guess if he, if Mike had that kind of money, there would be no steady girlfriend. This is true. This is very true. A lot of a lot of rentals. 
All right, so not in the biblical sense. <laughs> just, you, know, you know what I mean. Mike, All right. Mike doesn't need to rant him. No, I've got uh, got the other thing that uh, that we talked about briefly, which was the street outlaws Armageddon thing. Oh yeah, yeah, the outlaw Armageddon race. I have no no real details on it. I know um, I know the Chuck Mustang almost crashed. Apparently, there's video of him yeah. doing some crazy good driving, saving a saving a wreck. And uh, apparently, Big Chief won the whole thing. Really? So, so he now did. this wasn't like the thing you went to. It can be talked about. It's okay. And yeah, I think everything so. Else. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. This is, but the results aren't out and anywhere. I couldn't find them today. I was looking, but Big Chief um, won the twenty. Yeah, the race was tight. I saw the. Um, who do you beat in the final? Do you know? I don't remember who it was. But it, it, you know, apparently it was a no prep deal. Mm-hmm. Flashlight start, and uh, he won it all. So he's. Not that we were, I mean, we haven't hated on them in a long time because we kind of. I, 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 I've never really hated on Chief. No, I, no, no, we haven't actually. True. I'm you, finding it amazing that a Pontiac motor could win. And he that heard right. it too. You know, funny thing. Yeah, he was smoking oil, leaking oil. Yeah, yeah he heard it um, in one of the one of the test hits um, when he ran the Murder Nova. Right. He said he just held, held it together for the final. Yep. And he said he was going together. through the quarter hoping well, they I, stayed together. I got to tell you, I was amazed when it was told to me, and I probably should have known it, that if, you know, from looking at the show website, that it is, in fact, a Pontiac. Yeah. It, it's yeah. really real Pontiac. Pontiac. Yeah. That's yeah. a Butler built yeah, it's a aluminum bu- a Butler built with well, that's a Indian, Edelbrock heads. Well, that's an Indian Adventures block Pontiac. So that's yes. A, that's yeah, a but I mean, look, bullet. That's a bullet. I, got, I hear you. But coming from the street race side, if you if you had it, you were setting up a race, and you said, "Look, I'm bringing a real Pontiac." You're like, "Oh, what well, Pontiac headed?" Like, no, 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 no. A I'm bringing block. A, I'm bringing a Pontiac yeah, but block. Indian Avengers block is a block. It's yeah, a but the architecture different. of it, I know what you're saying. Yeah, but still, you it's got, still you a have, Pontiac head. It's yeah. still a Pontiac block. You have three it, exhaust it, ports. It's like, yeah, that ain't gonna work. Yeah, yeah. I'd be thinking back to the old dumb shit. I'd be, I'd be. All right, this guy. He's I, probably I, in the 600 cubic inch. Range. I'd want a 500 inch small block canned valve deal and. You know, hammer him. <laughs> uh, Jericho? Well, congratulations to him. Yeah. Yep. You know. Do you hear that, by what? the way? Hear what? That fucking bag of Snickers is still calling me. <laughs> that you put right behind me, you bastard. Tom. Uh, He's yelling my name. Tom, uh-huh. Tad is a foodie. So Tad was going to bring I'm just a fat. Today. I'm just a fat guy. And I had made mention that there were some Snickers and some uh, peanut M&M's and Tom's like oh my god you can't eat one Snickers so I walked in and I dropped them right in front of him and he turned around and he put them behind us it doesn't matter you know they're still sitting <laughs> you just know that <laughs> that's true. That true um we hear anything on daddy Dave is he uh is he out of the hospital is he doing okay or? um I he's doing okay I think he's been out uh I have not heard anything else all right well that's good because uh you know I mean the the bottom line is all that stuff sucks you know you don't ever want to see anybody get hurt and you said they took up a collection like a GoFundMe or something to try yeah to- somebody did I forget who did it but they got him some money uh I guess maybe to pay for his his bills or the new car or something but it was nice yeah a lot of people came to his aid we we don't know where it is but if you want to help Daddy Dave out if you feel so inclined uh I would imagine go look at a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter or yeah, whatever or just he did one go- of just things. Google it yeah just Google that. Daddy Dave I'm sure as long you as you out. all use the google with two o's yeah. i'm like alan a, a i might start to go find me for my enclose for your enclose yeah. cool. there you go i, need I mean you can try i want tad to you're gonna put this graffiti on it huh? the what? graphics and graffiti and no and what he, 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 could put hor- he could put horseshoes on it oh mm, no <laughs> are you you're the one he was talking about being an artist yeah hey, tad yeah, he says he's the artist that's fine oh! All right, well, you know, can we give him an assignment for next week to have do the, the he, logo? He really, like, over the years, I remember seeing some of the stuff he I'll bring in my stuff next and time. I, no, I, don't bring in your stuff. Do a logo. No, I'm not a logo person. You know, it's- Well, look, I can try, but- You you understand, too, because neither you, we've talked about it. We don't no. have a creative bone no. in our bodies. None. I mean, to be able to draw anything, nope. forget it. Musician, drawing, anything like that, I couldn't fucking do any of it. I can't even draw stick people. For yep. 2016, I want to have power and speed. I'm, tr- I, I'm well, not that. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be a we should, you know, we I'm, trying to find, I'm trying to figure a power and speed logo. It's like one power, one speed. You know, I got to think of something that. I thought we were doing something with a turbo and the I, words going in, coming out. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure something out. Maybe. Why, why don't we have like fans do it? Oh, uh, we, oh, we don't have any fans. <laughs> I got the snail uh, with the turbo shell, but we have plenty of. Fans. We have plenty of fans. I know we do. So, so I'm, 
you know, if anybody's got any ideas for any kind of logo or something, because apparently a bunch of you guys are actually asking for T-shirts and all kinds of stuff. And I mean, we really didn't think that far ahead. At least I didn't. You know, so I, I mean, did. I, I said we were making T-shirts like three months ago to put you on the spot because you had a guy that was that owed you something. That South Jersey guy. Listen to me. It won a per- I have said this a million we times punch before. Any Adams apple. Anybody <laughs> that has <laughs> one. Listen. Anybody that has artistic ability. Like yeah. Tad, yeah. they they're just they're unreliable. I as know, hell. I know. Like, I got it. I just thought of it for the power part. No, look, we don't, don't need to talk to about it. Just, hey, don't need, just just sit there like you normally do without saying nothing. For the power part, we're gonna have an extension cord. <sighs> yeah, just just there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no monster truck. Mike likes monster trucks. Oh my god! All right. So what else? Anybody An have anything else interesting? Mm-hmm. Tad, did you get what? anything for the show over this whole week of? A person flopping around on the ground, dying. Jesus. Oh, can't but I mean, seriously. That was, that was good material. Yeah, uh, good, well, car, I just, good car stuff. Good solid car I did stuff. find that at the, uh, I didn't get enough information on the Supra, six-speed Supra in the low eights. That, and I don't care what you say. Oh, shifting's easy. Trying to keep something on boost, shifting at that kind of speed, you know, without losing boost. Eh. Factory, dude, dude, factory re- trans? Yeah. Dude, relax. Six-speed. Yeah, he was looking a little bit like Alan. I know, wasn't he? For like, a second there. With the holding the hands. You know, that stuff. DSM um, that went to um, Street Outlaws. Yeah. I don't know how fast it went there because we couldn't talk about it anyway, mm-hmm. but that car's gone 8 0. Guy on chat said he'd buy a shirt, so we got one sale. <laughs> nice. <laughs> if he comes up with a logo, we'll give him a shirt. Yep. There you go. Free shirt if you come up with a logo. <laughs> Stick or automatic? Stick. Really? Yeah. Rolling through gears or? Yep, rowing. Because I know Ooh. one of the guys at Turbo Tricks, he's. Rebuilds those transaxles. Who, Keith? Uh, yeah. And he said, you know, for the longest time, he used to pop them left and, r- left and right until he figured out a clutch that would ease into the next gear, you know, and not shock it. And yep. Yep. Well, you do know that's a lot of why, like, Lenko's started to be used, right? All that stuff. It's so they could dial in clutch slip between the well, packs. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't understand, you know, I mean. Well, they, the packs would actually slip and the clutch would be locked yeah, up. Yeah, the clutch would lock. Oh, yeah, it's just the launch. That's the only time you touch the clutch and that's it. Yeah, you get the clutch to the clutches for launch. And then on every gear change, you could dial in the amount of hit in each pack to try to not have, yep. you know, tire, tire shake. shake. And yeah, it was a. And I guess now, what do they do? They, the clutch it handles it's everything. All clutch, well, they got yeah. Br- Bruno's now with the torque converter in the. Nobody's using Lincoln. that in Pro Stock. Yeah, not in Pro Stock. Not, not in Pro Stock. Well, no, I'm talking in the. But Outlaw 10 5, they used to have. The retarded horsepower boost stuff. Some of them do. Yeah, what was that thing you had, Donovan? Yeah, is that what it was? A same, Don- yeah, same thing. Same, same thing. principle. Yeah, it had a. It was a clutch, but an automatic. No, no, it was a converter with a Jericho. A converter with a yeah. Jericho. Yep. Yeah, that was strange. It was strange. Wow. All right. Anything else from the collective peoples? Yeah, I want to say one thing. I want. I seriously want somebody to um, get on. Get us on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, and uh, let's talk about doing a logo. We'll get some decals. We'll get some shirts, and uh, maybe the. Maybe we'll we'll do something for the five best um, renditions of what people think our logo should be. All right, sounds you good. You never know. You know what I kind of wanted to do? I mean, we, we really do have an awful lot of listeners. What I'd like to do is like to maybe give something away. Uh, some give t-shirts. Tad away. Some t-shirts. Let's give away Tad for a weekend. <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking like T-shirts, like maybe a, a gift certificate to somewhere or, you know, like some, I, I don't know. Tickets to the Super Bowl? Easy killer. <laughs> Easy killer. No, that'd be cool. Gift certificate to, um, I don't know. Manly? I like, don't know. Maybe it's like Summit or, you know, something. I don't know where people would buy How about shit a now. trip to the Bahamas? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you're the guy Mike, looking Crunch, at my Crunch is going to be our biggest <laughs> fan now. <laughs> look at my, he's over there like steaming, like, don't do that. Don't How many times do I have to no, call it yeah. Summit, Jegs, yeah. one, one of them. Something like that. We'll we'll get um we'll get something together and, uh, you know, we'll figure out something stupid that they could do. <laughs> to win it or something yeah but it would actually be good because we really would like to have more live listeners like today was actually a pretty good live listener day yeah um what what we'd like to have is see and we said it a million times before podcasting is tough because people listen when they can listen right but if you want fan interaction yeah you get facebook and social media and everything else but it's actually pretty damn good to have callers like that caller he's called a couple times now and he i remember him from calling the first yeah, time yeah me too he's good and he was great and he told on Alan. <laughs> exactly. That's why he was great. <laughs> so, you know, well. If, He's getting a shirt, period. Yeah, yeah, he'll get one. When, um, if, if we can get people to understand that they could, if they were listening and there was an opportunity to win something, I hate to pay for listeners, but I'd like to have more live but people. Is, isn't that what people do? I guess in the end. I but guess Facebook's in the end. all about. 
I just I'd like to have more live callers. And and again, I we understood no other podcasts that I know of really do this. They they record their show. They'll put something up on social media. If you want to talk to us, talk to us at this time. You know, call here and you call in. You really don't know what they're talking about. You right. just jump in. So, all right. Well, I guess uh, I guess that's it. I don't I don't. Know I think it was pretty good. Eh. I had fun. That was different. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I was like, man, the crickets were. <laughs> I should have been ready. Well, we'll be back next week. Yeah, and, we will. Uh, I, I, I guess imagine seven o'clock, seven fifteen. It's yep. tough to get here at times, you know, with Crunch and everybody else. But, yep. You know, we'll see you next time. Anybody got anything to say? Say good night, Ted. Mm, Peace. Nah, sure. <laughs>